Sorry to cut you short of there, but let's bring you live pictures from the White House and President Stand Trump is starting to speak. Let's take a listen. Members and families in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Earlier today, a wicked murderer opened fire at a Molson Coors Brewing Company plant, taking the lives of five people. A number of people were wounded, some badly wounded. Our hearts break for them and their loved ones. We send our condolences. We'll be with them. And it's a terrible thing, terrible thing. So our hearts go out to the people of Wisconsin and to the families. Thank you very much. Uh, I've just received another briefing from a great group of talented people on the virus that is going around to various parts of the world. We have, through some very good early decisions, decisions that were actually ridiculed at the beginning, we closed up our borders to flights coming in from certain areas, uh, areas that were hit by the coronavirus and hit pretty hard. And we did it very early. I, a lot of people thought we shouldn't have done it that early, and we did, and it turned out to be a very good thing. And the number one priority from our standpoint is the health and safety of the American people. And that's the way I viewed it when I made that decision. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. And we have the greatest experts in the world, really in the world, right here. The people that are called upon by other countries when things like this happen. We, uh, we're ready to adapt and we're ready to do whatever we have to as the disease spreads, if it spreads. Uh, as most of you know, the, uh, the level that we've had in our country is very low, and those people are getting better, or we think that in almost all cases, they're, the better are getting. We have a total of 15. We took in some from Japan. You heard about that, because they're American citizens, and they're in quarantine, uh, and uh, they're getting better, too but we felt we had an obligation to do that. It could have been as many as 42, and uh, we found that we were, it was just an obligation we felt that we had. We could have left them, and that would have been very bad, very bad, I think, American people. And uh, they're recovering. Of the 15 people, the original 15, as I call them, uh, eight of them have returned to their homes, to stay in their homes until fully recovered. One is in the hospital, and five have fully recovered. And uh, one is, uh, we think, in pretty good shape. And it's uh, in between hospital and going home. So we have a total of, uh, but we have a total of 15 people, and uh, they're in a process of recovering, with some already having fully recovered. Uh, we started out by uh, looking at certain things. We've been working with uh, the Hill very, very carefully, very strongly. And I think we have very good bipartisan spirit for money. We were asking for $2.5 billion, and we think that's uh, a lot. But uh, the Democrats and, I guess, uh, Senator Schumer wants us to have much more than that. And normally in life, I'd say, we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, if they want to give more, we'll do more. We're going to spend whatever's appropriate. Hopefully, we're not going to have to spend so much, because we really think we've done a great job in keeping it down to a minimum. Uh, and again, uh, uh, we've had tremendous success, tremendous success beyond what people would have thought. Now, at the same time, you do have some outbreaks in some countries, Italy and Various countries are having some difficulty. China, you know about where it started. Uh, I spoke with President Xi. We had a great talk. He's working very hard, I have to say. He's working very, very hard. And uh, if you can count on the reports coming out of China, that spread has gone down quite a bit. Uh, the infection seems to have gone down over the last two days. As opposed to getting larger, it's actually gotten smaller in one instance where we think uh, we can be it's somewhat reliable it seems to have gotten quite a bit smaller uh, with respect to the money that's uh, being negotiated 
Uh, they can do whatever they want. I mean, they can, we'll do the two and a half. We're requesting two and a half. Uh, some Republicans would like us to get four, and some Democrats would like us to get eight and a half, and we'll be satisfied whatever, whatever it is. We're bringing in a specialist, very highly regarded specialist, uh, tomorrow who works actually at the State Department, very, very uh, tremendously talented in doing this. I want you to understand something that shocked me when I saw it, that uh, I spoke with uh, Dr. Fauci on this, and I was really uh, amazed, and I think most people are amazed to hear it. Uh, the flu in our country kills from 25,000 people to 69,000 people a year. That was shocking to me. And uh, so far, if you look at what we have with the 15 people, and they're recovering, one is, uh, one is uh, pretty sick, but uh, hopefully will recover. But the others are in great shape. But think of that, 25,000 to 69,000. Over the last 10 years, we've lost 360,000. These are people that have died from the flu, from what we call the flu. Hey, did you get your flu shot? And uh, that's something. Now, what we've done is we've stopped non-U.S. citizens from coming into America from China. That was done very early on. We're screening people, and we have been at a very high level, screening people coming into the country from infected areas. We have in quarantine those infected and those at risk. We have a lot of great quarantine facilities. We're rapidly developing a vaccine, and they can speak to you. The professionals can speak to you about that. Uh, the vaccine is coming along well, and in speaking to the doctors, we think this is something that we can develop fairly rapidly, a vaccine for the future, and coordinate with the support of our partners. We have great relationships with all of the countries that we're talking about. Some uh, it's a fairly large number of countries. Some it's one person. And uh, many countries have no problem whatsoever. And we'll see what happens. But we're very, very ready for this, for anything, whether it's going to be a uh, breakout of larger proportions or whether or not we're, uh, you know, we're at that very low level. And uh, we want to keep it that way. So we're at the low level. As they get better, we take them off the list so that we're going to be pretty soon at only five people. And we could be at just one or two people over the next short period of time. So we've had very good luck. The um, Johns Hopkins, I guess it is, a highly respected, great place. They did a, stu a, a study, comprehensive, the country's best and worst prepared for an epidemic. And the United States is now, we're rated number one. We're rated number one for being prepared. This is a list of different countries. I don't want to get in your way, especially since you do such a good job. Uh, this is a list of uh, the different countries. United States is rated number one, most prepared. United Kingdom, Netherlands, Australia, Canada, Thailand, Sweden, Denmark, South Korea, Finland. These, this is a list of, of the best rated countries in the world by Johns Hopkins. Uh, we're doing something else that's uh, important to me because he's been uh, terrific in many ways, but he's also very good on health care. And we really followed him very closely. A lot of states do. When Mike was governor, Mike Pence of Indiana, uh, they've established great health care. They have a great system there, a system that a lot of, a lot of the other states have really looked to and changed their systems. They wanted to base it on the Indiana system. He's very good. And I think, and he's, he's uh, really very expert at the field. And what I've done is I'm going to be announcing uh, exactly right now that I'm going to be putting our Vice President, Mike Pence, in charge. And Mike will be working with the professionals, and doctors, and everybody else that's working. The team is, is brilliant. I spent a lot of time with the team over the last couple of weeks. But they're totally brilliant. And we're doing really well. And Mike is going to be in charge, and Mike will report back to me. But he's got a certain talent for this, and uh, I'm going to ask Mike Pence to say a few words, please. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. President. President Trump's made clear from the first days of this administration we have no higher priority than the safety 
security, health, and well-being of the American people. And from the first word of an outbreak of the coronavirus, the President took unprecedented steps to protect uh, the American people from the spread of this disease. He recounted those briefly, but uh, the establishment of travel restrictions, uh, aggressive quarantine effort of Americans that are returning, the declaration of a public health emergency and establishing uh, the White House Corona Task Force are all reflective of the urgency that the President has brought to a whole-of-government approach. Um, as a uh, former governor uh, from the state where the first MERS case uh, emerged in 2014, uh, I know full well uh, the importance of presidential leadership, the importance of administration leadership, and the vital role of partnerships of state and local governments and health authorities in responding to the potential threat of dangerous infectious diseases. Uh, and I, uh, uh, I look forward, uh, Mr. President, to uh, serving uh, in this role and bringing together uh, all the members of the Corona Task Force that you've established, HHS, CDC, DHS, the Department of Transportation, and State. Uh, this team has been at your direction, Mr. President, meeting every day since it was established. Uh, my role will be to continue to uh, uh, bring that team together, uh, to bring to the President uh, uh, the best options for action, to see to the safety and well-being and health of the American people. Uh, we'll also be continuing to reach out to governors, uh, state and local officials. Uh, in fact, in the recent days, uh, the White House met with over 40 state, county, and city health officials from over 30 states and territories to discuss how to respond uh, to this, uh, to the potential threat of the coronavirus. Uh, we'll be working with them in renewed ways to make sure they have the resources uh, to be able to respond. And as the President said, uh, we'll be adding additional personnel here at the White House to uh, support our efforts on the President's behalf. We'll also be working with members of Congress to ensure that the resources are available uh, for this whole of government response. and. We'll be working very closely uh, with Secretary Azar and his team uh, that have done an outstanding job uh, communicating to the public to ensure the American people have the best information uh, on ways to protect themselves and their families and also that the public has the most timely information uh, on the potential threat to the American people. Uh, Mr. President, um, uh, uh, as, uh, as we've been briefed, while the threat to the American public remains low of a spread of the coronavirus, uh, you have uh, directed this team to take all steps necessary to continue to ensure the health and well-being of the American people. Uh, and the people of this country can be confident that under your leadership, uh, we will continue to bring the full resources of the federal government in coordination with our state and local partners uh, to see to the health and well-being and to the effective response to the coronavirus here in the United States of America. Uh, with that, uh, uh, the President has asked me to recognize uh, the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, and also the Deputy Director of CDC, uh, Dr. Ann Schockett, for the mobs. Secretary. So Vice President Mike Pence there, who is now in charge of the United States response to this global coronavirus emergency. And as expected, the president very much trying to uh, keep a handle on things, reassuring, saying that the United States is very ready. He went through the figures with the number of people, 15 in total, who were taken in from Japan, U.S. citizens who were in quarantine. But he was stressing that of those 15 people, uh, the original that he described, eight have returned to stay indoors in self-quarantine in their homes until they recover. One is in hospital, five have fully recovered, one is in good shape. So the president very much trying to reassure and saying that the uh, number one thing on the government's mind is the health and the safety of the United States, but the risk to the United States remains low. Chris Buckler, my colleague, is always monitoring all of this from Washington for for us joining us live now, Chris. So just to go through, did I get those figures? Those figures uh, that the president was saying, very much in reassurance mood, uh, trying to say that things are going the way that he is expecting. The United States is theoretically safe. 
Yeah, a slightly different tone from the president, though, because he has been dismissing almost the idea of this being a particular threat to America and actually getting angry at American news networks for what he felt was increasing the fear in the U.S., what we saw here was a president that was trying to say that they are in control of this, they are aware of the dangers, and they're going to do what they can to ensure that this does not become a problem for the United States. And of course, there have been briefings that suggest that there are concerns that certainly the health authorities here want to do what they can to ensure that this doesn't become a problem, but that there is a danger of spread between communities, which of course is what every country is concerned about. And when you listen to him, he was very much clear in saying that yes, two and a half billion dollars has been assigned to deal with this problem but that he was listening to members of Congress. He said, for example, that Democrats, some Democrats, for example, Chuck Schumer, who's the leading Democrat in the Senate, has been asking for something like eight and a half billion dollars and really saying two and a half billion wasn't enough. But even some Republicans, uh, President Trump acknowledged, members of his own party were concerned that this two and a half billion dollar figure was not enough, that they wanted four billion dollars. And he was saying, we were listening. The White House is listening. We will allocate what money is needed. And it does give you a sense that President Trump is very concerned about this. He has seen stock market figures fall, which always rattles the president who believes that is a good sign of economic um, indicators in the United States. And he wants the economy to be strong in this election year. So what he's trying to do here is to say, whatever money is needed, whatever has to be done, we are going to do it. We are on top of this problem and we are prepared for this problem. He was always so trying to put this into context as well, talking about just how many the, the thousands of people that have died from the flu uh, compared to the coronavirus. I guess you say that pr previously he was a bit dismissive of this, but he is now listening and hearing the concerns of people who are genuinely scared about how contagious this particular strain of virus is. Yeah, talking about the fact that somewhere in the region of 25,000 to 69,000 people a year is what he said, um, died of the flu in the United States. And he said that that did put it into context, although obviously that does also raise concerns about the coronavirus and obviously the danger that it could be to particularly vulnerable people inside communities. So he's acknowledging that really this is a threat because it's a virus they are going to have to deal with. But you saw him hold up that that graph showing just the countries that he believes are prepared to deal with this and America very much at the top of it. They believe that they're putting the efforts in to try to deal with this. At the same time, you know, he knows the issues here. And when he talked about those 15 people you mentioned, obviously there are people who have come from the cruise ship that that people were evacuated from in Japan. But aside from those, they have 15 cases in the United States. And he did acknowledge that one of those 15 was, in his words, pretty sick. Although he did say, hopefully, that they would recover. But it does give you an indication that the health authorities are saying to him, listen, we need to be aware of this. And certainly Mike Pence, the vice president, was talking there about the idea that they will put additional staffing into the White House, that they have experts on standby. They want to do what they can, but more importantly, to be seen to do what they can. Chris, we don't have much time left, but just briefly, would you, how many confirmed cases then do we know in the United States? Because the, of course, we're talking about these 15, the original 15 that he described. How does yeah. it break up, do you know? Yeah, so basically it, it depends on what figures you believe because he was saying 42 from that cruise ship in the, the Diamond Princess cruise ship and then another 15. The figure I have for the United States is 59 cases, which would be slightly more, a couple more, but it's certainly between the 55 to 60 number in the United States at the moment. Excellent, Chris. As always, thank you so much, Chris Buckler there in Washington. And of course, we'll uh, look at those figures and bring you up to date in the next edition of Newsday coming up very, very shortly. Thanks for watching for now, though. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. here in Singapore, midnight in London and 7 p.m. in Washington, where President Trump has just made a statement on the coronavirus outbreak. He announced that Vice President Mike Pence will be in charge of the U.S. response, and he said the risk to the American people from the virus remains very low. The president also said the U.S. government would spend whatever is appropriate to combat the disease. Now, what we've done is we've stopped non-U.S. citizens from coming into America from China. That was done very early on. We're screening people, and we have been at a very high level. 
screening people coming into the country from infected areas. We have in quarantine those infected and those at risk. We have a lot of great quarantine facilities. We're rapidly developing a vaccine, and they can speak to you. The professionals can speak to you about that. Uh, the vaccine is coming along well, and in speaking to the doctors, we think this is something that we can develop fairly rapidly, a vaccine for the future, and coordinate with the support of our partners. We have great relationships with all of the countries that we're talking about, some uh, fairly large number of countries. Some it's one person, and uh, many countries have no problem whatsoever. And we'll see what happens. But we're very, very ready for this, for anything, whether it's going to be a uh, breakout of larger proportions or whether or not we're, uh, you know, we're at that very low level. So the president there speaking within the past 10 minutes. In fact, that press conference is still ongoing. He's taking a very reassuring tone, telling the United States that they are very ready for this particular virus. My colleague Chris Buckler has been monitoring this for us. He joins us live from Washington. So I guess, Chris, shall we start with the figures first of all? What do we know about the confirmed cases in the States? Yeah, the phrase he used was ready, willing and able. There are obviously 42 people who were evacuated from the cruise ship in Japan who were brought back to the United States. But aside from them, the president says that there are 15 confirmed cases. Of those, he said one person is pretty sick. Hopefully, though, he said that they would recover. The others seem to be either in hospital or already home. And he said that five had fully recovered. Now, that is a small number. But as you say, what is clear from the White House is that they want to be seen that they are in a position to deal with any problems that could emerge. And that's because the health authorities here have been making clear that there is a danger in the months ahead that we could have community spread. And that is what is really worrying people. Now, to some extent, the president has been playing this down. He's been angry at the American news networks for spreading fear, as he puts it. He's been watching the stock market, which has been affected by concerns. It has fallen and he is always concerned about that because the economy is a key focus of the president. So what he's doing here is coming forward with a very different tone and saying that they're going to get a handle on this. He's putting the vice president, Mike Pence, in charge of dealing with the coronavirus issue. And he also very specifically said that he would arrange more money to deal with the problem and address any concerns about this. At this stage, two and a half billion dollars has been set aside, but he did make clear that Democrats wanted significantly more than that. Even Republicans wanted something like four billion dollars. He says he is prepared to, put, to talk to Congress and he's prepared to increase that number. They will do all they can to ensure that they deal with the coronavirus. Chris, thank you so much. So Chris uh, Buckler there just with a brief outline of what the president has been saying. Let's go back to the White House to listen in because that press conference is ongoing. Have you been presented any plans that would involve quarantining cities like we saw in China? And what would have to happen for you to take a We do have uh, plans of a much, uh, on a much larger scale, should we need that. Uh, we're working with states. We're working with virtually every state. Uh, and we do have plans on a larger scale if we need it. We don't think we're going to need it, but, you know, you always have to be prepared. And... Uh, Again, Congress is talking to us about funding, and uh, we're getting far more than what we asked for. And I guess the best thing to do is take it. We'll take it. How much money are you willing to give Congress if they're going six Well, we're going to see, but we'll take care of states because states are working very hard. We have hospitals in states that make rooms available, and they, they're building quarantine areas, areas where you can keep people safely. Uh, we're working really well with states. It's a very big part of it. So, uh, you know, my attitude of Congress wants to give us the money so easy. Wasn't very easy for the wall, but we got that one done. Uh, if they want to give us the money, uh, we'll take the money and we'll just do a good job with it. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. President, should Americans be going out getting protective equipment such as masks and so, and so forth? And if so, what is the U.S. doing to boost production of masks? Well, we can uh, get a lot of it. In fact, we've ordered a lot of it just in case we need it. We may not need it. You understand that. But in case... We're looking at worst case scenario, we're going to be 
set very quickly. But we, I don't think we're going to ever be anywhere near that. I really don't believe that we're going to be anywhere near that. Our borders are very controlled. Our flights in from certain areas that we're talking about are very controlled. I don't think we'll ever be anywhere near that. Please go ahead. The stock, the, back to the stock market for a second. The travel-related stocks have especially been yeah. hammered here in the last sure. couple of days. Um, what would you say to Americans out there who right now are looking forward to the summer or the upcoming months and saying to themselves, should I make myself a summer plan? Should I go travel abroad? Well, hopefully they're going to be able to do that. Uh, we think, we hope that it's going to be in good shape by that time. Uh, but, you know, they're going to have to remain a little bit flexible. Yeah, I would say travel-related companies, certainly right now, that would be, uh, that would be, they would be hurt. At the same time, this ends. This is going to end. Hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. And I think the business that they lost will be picked up at a later date. But, you know, right now, I think they're not going to be ch — probably not going to be uh, going to China. They're not going to be going to certain countries where the problem is uh, far greater than it is in the United States. Uh, what it's going to do is keep people home, and they're going to travel to places that we have. We have the greatest — it's the greatest tourism country in the world. So instead of leaving our country, leaving our shores, they'll stay here. And again, when you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. Uh, that's a pretty good job we've done. What is your response to Speaker Pelosi, who said earlier today that you don't know what you're talking about about the coronavirus? I'm also wondering if you want to address critics who well, say I think, you can't be trusted yeah, sure. about what your administration is saying. Sure. I think Speaker Pelosi is incompetent. She lost the Congress once. I think she's going to lose it again. Uh, she lifted my poll numbers up 10 points. I never thought that I would see that so quickly and so easily. Uh, I'm leading everybody. We're doing great. I don't want to do it that way. It's almost unfair if you think about it. But I think she's incompetent, and I think she's not thinking about the country. And instead of making a statement like that, where I've been beating her routinely at everything, uh, instead of making a statement like that, she should be saying we have to work together because we have a big problem potentially, and maybe it's going to be a very little problem. I hope that it's going to be a very little problem, but we have to work together. Instead, she wants to do that. Same thing with crying Chuck Schumer. He goes out and he says, uh, the president only asked for two and a half billion dollars. He should have eight and a half billion. This is the first time I've ever been told that we should take more. Usually it's we have to take less. And we should be working together. He shouldn't be making statements like that because it's so bad for the country. And Nancy Pelosi, I mean, she should go back to a district and clean it up because it's the number one. If you look at percentage down, that was one of the finest in the world. And now you look at what's happening. And I'm just saying we should all be working together. She's trying to create a panic. And there's no reason to panic because we have done so good. These professionals behind me and over here and over there and back here and in some conference rooms. I just left a group of 45 people that are the most talented people in the world. Parts of the world are asking us in a very nice way, can they partake and help them? So Nancy Pelosi shouldn't, and she knows it's not true. She knows she, it, all, all they're trying to do is get a political advantage. This isn't about political advantage. We're all trying to do the right thing. They shouldn't be saying, this is terrible. President Trump isn't asking for enough money. How stupid a thing to say. If they want to give us more money, that's okay. We'll take more money. Some Republicans think we should have more money, too. That's okay. We'll take more money. But they shouldn't demean the people that are on the stage who are the finest in the world. They're not demeaning me. They're demeaning the greatest health care professionals in the world and people that do exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, uh, your campaign uh, today sued the New York Times for an opinion piece. Yeah. Is it your opinion or is it your contention that if people have an opinion contrary to yours that they should be sued? Well, when they get the opinion totally wrong, as the New York Times did, and frankly, they've got a lot wrong over the last number of years. So we'll see how that, let that work its way through the courts. Right? No, no, if you, if you read it, you'll see it's beyond an opinion. That's not an opinion. That's something much more than an opinion. They did a bad thing. Uh, and there'll be more coming. There'll be more coming. <laughs> Tokyo will host the Summer Olympic Games this July. Do you expect Tokyo will be? I hope so, because Shinzo Abe is a very good friend of mine. I love the people of Japan, and I hope it's uh, going to be in good shape. As you know, you have a number of people in Japan who have been infected. Uh, I hear they're doing a very professional job, which doesn't surprise me at all. With Shinzo and with all of the people you have, I know Japan very well. I think they're going to handle it very well. 
uh, it's a little tight. You know, it's a little tight. They spent billions of dollars building one of the most beautiful venues I've ever seen. And uh, your prime minister is very proud of it. I hope it's going to be fine. We hope it will. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, the doctor at CDC just talked about dusting off preparedness plans. Yeah. Uh, but coming from you, it, it has more weight. Do you feel that U.S. schools should be preparing for a coronavirus spreading? I would think so, yes. I mean, I haven't spoken specifically about that with the various doctors, but I would think so, yes. I think uh, every aspect of our society should be prepared. I don't think it's going to come to that, especially with the fact that uh, we're going down, not up. We're going very substantially down, not up. But, yeah, I think schools should be preparing and, you know, get ready just in case. The words are just in case. We don't think we're going to be there. We don't think we're going to be anywhere close. And again, if you look at some countries, they are coming down and starting to go in the other direction. This will end. This will end. Uh, you look at flu season. I said 26,000 people. I never heard of a number like that. 26,000 people going up to 69,000 people, doctor, you told me before. 69,000 people die every year from 26 to 69, every year from the flu. Now think of that. It's incredible. So far, the results of all of this that everybody's reading about, and, and part of the thing is you, you want to keep it the way it is. You don't want to see panic because there's no reason to be panicked about. But when I mentioned the flu, I said, actually, I, I asked the various doctors, I said, is this just like flu? Because people die from the flu, and this is very unusual. And it is a little bit different, but in some ways it's easier, and in some ways it's a little bit tougher. Uh, but uh, we have it so well under control. I mean, we really have done a very good job. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. You mentioned the stock market earlier. To go back to that, to be clear, the Dow Jones dropped more than 2,000 points this week. Are you suggesting that that was overblown? Are financial markets overreacting here? I think the financial markets are very upset when they look at the Democrat candidates standing on that stage making fools out of themselves. And they say, if we ever have a president like this, and there's always a possibility. It's an election. You know, who knows what happens, right? I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win by a lot. But when they look at the statements made by the people stand behind, standing behind those podiums, I think that has a huge effect, yeah. It had to do with the coronavirus. No, I think it did. I think it did. But I think you can add quite a bit of sell-off to what they're seeing, because they're seeing the potential. Uh, you know, again, I think we're going to win. I feel very confident of it. Uh, we've done everything and much more than I said we were going to do. You look at what we've done. What we've done is incredible with the tax cuts and regulation cuts and rebuilding our military, taking care of our vets and getting them choice and accountability. All of the things we've done, protecting our Second Amendment. I mean, they view that the Second Amendment. They, they're going to destroy the Second Amendment. When people look at that, they say, this is not good. So you add that in. I really believe that's a factor. But no, this is what we're talking about is is the virus. That's what we're talking about. But I, I do believe that's I do believe in terms of CNBC and in terms of Fox business. I do believe that that's a factor. Yeah. And I think after I win the election, I think the stock market's going to boom like it's never boomed before, just like it did, by the way, after I won the last election. The stock market the day after went up like a rocket ship. <laughs> Uh, loosen the travel restrictions regarding China. when we're uh, at a point where we don't have a problem you know we're not going to loosen the travel restrictions that's what saved us had i not made mike alluded to it had i not made a decision very early on not to take people from a certain area we wouldn't be talking this way we'd be talking about many more people would have been infected uh, i took a lot of heat i mean some people call me racist because i made a decision so early and we had never done that as a country before let alone early so it was a you know, bold decision. It turned out to be a good decision. But I was criticized by the Democrats. They called me a racist because I made that decision, if you can believe that one. Uh, we have to all work together. We can't say bad things, and especially when we have the best team anywhere in the world. And, and we really gave it an early start. We gave it a very early start. Yeah. have consistently called for enormous cuts to the CDC, the NIH, and the WHO. You've yeah. talked a lot today about how these professionals are excellent, how they're critical and necessary. Does this experience at all give you pause about those? No, because we, we can get money and we can increase staff. We know all the people. We know all the good people. It was a question I asked the doctors before. Uh, some of the people we cut, they haven't been 
used for many, many years. And if we, they, if we have a need, and we can get them very quickly. And rather than spending the money, and I'm a business person, I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them. When we need them, we can get them back very quickly. For instance, we're bringing some people in tomorrow that are already in this, you know, great government that we have, and very specifically for this. Uh, we can build up very, very quickly, and we've already done that. I mean, we really have built up. We have a, a great staff, and uh, using Mike, uh, I'm doing that because he's in the administration, and he's very good at doing what he does and doing as it relates to this. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Mr. President. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so far, so far, your administration. I, I picked him, but you're fine. So far, your administration is only testing uh, less than 500 people, and health officials are questioning whether that's enough, uh, comparing to other countries who have tested more than tens of thousands of people. Are you planning to test more people? Well, we're testing uh, everybody that we need to test, and we're finding very little problem. Very little problem now. You treat this like a flu. We were, uh, in fact, I might ask one of the doctors to come up and explain it. Uh, you want to wash your hands a lot. You want to stay. If you're not feeling well, if you feel you have a flu, stay inside. Sort of quarantine yourself. Don't go outside. Uh, but there are certain steps that you can take that we won't even be necessary. You know, in many cases, when you catch this, it's very light. You don't even know there's a problem. Sometimes they just get the sniffles. Sometimes they just get something where they're not feeling quite right. And sometimes they feel really bad. But that's a little bit like the flu. It's a little like the regular flu that we have flu shots for. And we'll essentially have a flu shot for this in a fairly quick manner. Yeah, go ahead. Two weeks ago, Mr. President, your acting OMD director was, was in this room and was talking about what he expects to be GDP growth for this coming year. He said it was 3%. And we've talked about the effects of the coronavirus on the supply chain, the declines in the financial markets. Are you still confident that you'll see that kind of economic growth this no. year? No. We're going to have tremendously low unemployment. We're setting records in that way. In fact, the administration is, the, as you know, the lowest average unemployment of any administration in history. And our numbers are very low, very good, 3.5, 3.6. But uh, you can't really see what this does in terms of GDP. It could affect it, but that's irrelevant compared to what we're talking about. We want to make sure it's safe. Safety, number one. Uh, but this would have, uh, you know, an impact on GDP. But we're still uh, very, very, we're doing great. But this will have, just like, I'll tell you what has a big impact. Boeing has a big impact. How did that happen? A year ago, all of a sudden, that happened. I think that took away a half a point to a point even. You know, it's a massive company. I think Boeing, we had the General Motors strike. That was uh, a big impact on GDP. And, of course, we're paying interest rates. I disagree with the head of the Fed. I'm not, uh, I'm not happy with uh, what that is because uh, he's kept interest rates. President Obama didn't have near the numbers, and yet, if you look at what happened, he was paying zero. We're paying interest. Now, it's more conservative, and frankly, people that put their money away are now getting a return on their money as opposed to not getting anything. But I think, you know, we're the... We're the greatest of them all. We should be paying the lowest interest rates. And when Germany and other countries are paying negative rates, meaning they're literally getting paid when they put out money. I mean, they, they borrow money and they get paid when it gets paid back. Who ever heard of this before? It's at first. But we don't do that. So I totally disagree with our Fed. I think our Fed has made a terrible mistake. And it would have made a big difference as good as we've done, even without the 2,000 points. And we started off at 16,000 and we'll be at 28,000. Without, we we're going to crack 30,000. Uh, we have had increases like nobody's seen before, uh, but we're doing well. But we have to watch, uh, we're doing well anyway, in other words, even despite the 2,000 points. It sounds like a lot, and it's a lot, but it's not, it's very little compared to what we've gone up. Uh, but we'll be watching it very closely. But we have been hurt by General Motors, we've been hurt by Boeing, and we've hurt by, we've been hurt, in my opinion, very badly by our own. Federal Reserve, who has also created a very strong dollar. That's something nice about a strong dollar, but it makes it much harder to do business outside of this country. Uh, thank you, sir. 
a number of your supporters. So the president there speaking for the past 50 or so minutes, trying to appease the American public and reassure them about the preparedness of the United States when it comes to coronavirus, and uh, also mentioning his favorite subject, the economy. Chris Buckler monitoring all of this for us. Chris, uh, so very much the United States is ready. It's uh, monitoring all of this, reassuring the United States population there. Um, but also a bit of a pop. I couldn't help wondering that this was turning into a bit of a political campaign ahead of the presidential election, a bit of a pop when it comes to um, the Democrats and the uh, possible candidates and the effect on the stock market. Yeah, you heard him take specific pops at the leader of the Democrats in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, and also the leader in the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. And of course, this has the danger of becoming an election issue, particularly if the White House isn't seen to deal with any potential problems that could emerge in the months that lead to that presidential election. And that is why we are seeing such a fervent response here from Donald Trump. While he may have been dismissive in some comments and tweets up to now, he is very firmly getting behind that podium and saying, as president, I am taking action and I will make sure that this will not become a problem for the United States. And as you rightly pick up there, there are two messages going out. One is to the American public saying, listen, we're going to deal with this. Put your trust in us and prepare to put whatever money is needed. The vice president, Mike Pence, is stepping up. He's going to look over this whole issue and we will try to make sure that this isn't a problem and we are prepared, able and willing to deal with this. And the other message going out was specifically to the stock market, saying to the financial markets, do not panic about this. We will deal with this problem in the United States. We are ready and prepared for it. And there is no need for this to affect the economy. And again, when he says that there is no need to affect the economy, that is, again, the candidate President Trump speaking there, somebody who is very concerned about that presidential election in November. Certainly is. He was saying that it's, uh, that it could impact the economy. Cannot uh, really be determined as such. But when it comes to when it comes to some of the uh, technical issues, the logistics, the president was saying that they will not loosen the existing travel restrictions until coronavirus is no longer a problem. Talk us through some of the logistics that he went through. Yeah, beyond that, he was also asked specifically if they were going to extend perhaps travel restrictions, for example, to people coming from South Korea and Italy. The response from the president was, we'll look at it. We're going to have to look at things as, as time goes on and we'll have to address things as things go on. He was also making clear, though, as far as airports are concerned, that they are screening and monitoring people. And that is something that they're going to have to watch as time goes on. The United States is very concerned about this potentially getting into the community and spreading through the community. And therefore, they're going to make sure that at airports they do what they can to ensure that nobody comes in carrying the coronavirus. Beyond that, the president was also making clear that this isn't just an issue for the administration. It's also very much having to work with individual states across the U.S. and making sure they are prepared. We've seen the response from New York today. New York state governor and also the New York City mayor making very clear that they want to be in a position to have extra beds to deal with this, that they want to have masks. And, and masks could become an issue because it's been pointed out uh, by several people that ultimately some of those are manufactured in China. But they are prepared to deal with this issue. And of course, for some cities, it will be very important because they have many people packed closely together and living closely together. Chris, so and just briefly, would you just once more run through us the figures of how many people have contracted the coronavirus so far that we know of? Because the figures obviously are a little difficult to follow. They're moving. Yeah, sure. In terms of the United States, what the president was saying is 42 people were evacuated from that cruise ship in Japan and they are back in the US. They're in quarantine and they are not as big a concern as the other 15 people who have been confirmed with the coronavirus, according to the president. He suggests that one of them is, in his words, pretty sick, and that obviously is a concern, although some of the others have actually been released from hospital. Chris, as always, thanks so much for just uh, bringing us up to date. Chris Buckler there in Washington, Mariko. So we had that special edition You've of Newsday watching... with the president. And you've been watching Newsday. I'm Marie Coy in Singapore. I'm Kashmir in London. Thank you Thanks so for staying with us. You.